beloved. Can you believe it is our second COVID-19 Palm Sunday? Oh my goodness, it looks different this time though, this year, because there are more of us together. I'm so delighted to see you all here, especially if you are coming home for the first time in a year. Welcome home. <laughs> welcome. And welcome to everyone. Welcome to First Church in Sterling, where we are gathered in the spirit of Jesus, committed to creating heaven on earth. We are still practicing physical distancing and social revolution during this time of quarantine. Welcome to those of you who are joining us live in the sanctuary and those of you who are watching us on Facebook Live. Welcome to all who need a church home and to all who call this church home already. Welcome to people from all towns and cities and states and countries. Welcome to all who want to follow Christ, who have doubts, who do not believe. Welcome to people of all ages, races, nationalities, abilities, sexualities, and gender expressions. Welcome to single, to partnered, and to married people. Welcome to believers, welcome to questioners, welcome to questioning believers, welcome to everyone. We welcome you to come as you are and to meet this God who challenges us to be more than we think we can be. We welcome you if you're not perfect, because certainly neither are we, and we know that at times the church has rejected difference and denied God's promise for itself and for others, which is why we say without reservation that you are welcome here just as God welcomes you as a beloved child. We are especially delighted to see you here if this is your first time with us at the start of Holy Week, Palm Sunday, and we would love to know more about you. So if you're joining us online on Facebook Live, if you could just put in the comments who you are and where you're watching us from, we would be ever so grateful. If you're visiting us for the first time here in the sanctuary, we would love for you to go to our website, www.fcsterling.org, to learn more about us and our ministries and to connect with us in whatever way you can. It's a little bit trickier during these socially distanced times, but it is still possible. We are available by phone and by email and by Zoom and by messenger chat, and we would love to know who you are and why you came. We are right now $42,000 short of our stewardship goal, which is amazing because it means we've raised $280,000, but we still have about $42,000 more to go. So thank you so much to those of you who have already pledged. Thank you especially for those of you who have raised your pledges so significantly in order to make up for those of us who are struggling right now financially. We are so appreciated. We so appreciate it. And we would love for you to get those pledges in if you haven't yet so that we don't have to call you. We don't like making those phone calls. So you can do that very easily by um, uh, sending an email to Helen in the office to let her know what your pledge is um, or by, uh, by Facebook Messenger. However you want to let us know, just let us know. If you um, have sea glass, if you, I mean, if you didn't pick up sea glass at the door, if you raise your hand, um, Pam or Beth, sorry, Beth will come around with it. So just raise your hand high in the air if you need a piece of sea glass. That is our gift to you. We want you to have it. It's been our anchor image for all of um, Lent, and we want to make sure that along with your palm, did you all get a palm? Raise your hand if you don't have a palm. Okay, everybody got a palm. Good. We want you to have many sacred objects to worship with this morning. If you are at home, please grab your sea glass that we sent you in the mail. If you didn't get sea glass in the mail, grab something that's broken in your home, maybe something that's been broken and repaired or something like a favorite cup uh, or a ceramic that got broken and just hold on to it. Today is Palm Sunday and thus begins our Holy Week journey with Jesus from his triumphant entry into Jerusalem today to the Last Supper and betrayal of Maundy Thursday to the horror of Good Friday and the triumphant resurrection on Easter Sunday. This is a great day in the life of the church, Palm Sunday, and so is Easter next Sunday. However, 
Please do not just come uh, in person or online to our Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday services because you miss most of the story if you do. Just going from glory to glory leaves out the meat, the part that is hardest to face, yes, but also the part that makes resurrection that much sweeter. So join us on Monday, Thursday at seven o'clock and also a Good Friday at 12 o'clock this week in our sanctuary or online. Also, Easter Sunday will be outdoors so that we can accommodate as many people as possible. Bring your chairs. You'll hear more about that later in the service. We now deepen into worship by saying together our affirmation of faith, which is printed in your bulletins. In the love of truth and the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humankind. Now, does everybody have their palms ready? Because we're getting ready to do a big parade around the sanctuary together. So get ready when, you, when you're called. We're going to stand up and dance and go around the, the sanctuary together. So get your palm ready. If you don't have it, go grab one. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughters of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the ground. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting. Now repeat after me, okay? And start waving your branches. Get the branches ready. Here we go. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes. Blessed, Blessed is, is the one who comes. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Let's go. Here we go. Everybody.
for not making me do that myself. <laughs> a round of applause for that parade. That was, that was pretty good. You know, in a lot of churches, they just use the kids for that. I feel like we should do it with everybody every year from now on. Amen. Church, we've seen the stories of Jesus' healing ministry are filled with words and deeds. When he rides into Jerusalem, the people hoped he would meet their immediate need by healing the system oppressing them. We know now that this healing was not confined to that moment in history, but offers a new way of life to all people in all times and places. He made a case for compassion for all, especially the least, that his followers have taken up ever since. As we head into the events of Holy Week, we begin to see that our ability to forgive ourselves and others is the foundation for transformation in progress. We integrate belief and action to promote health and wholeness. We celebrate a parade of compassionate power. We remember another healing story of transformation. We begin to understand our ability to move toward recovery. We glorify God for beautiful words and works of wholeness and share that treasured beauty with others. We know there will still be pain, but we also know love will win. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I Grace abounds in deepest voice. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've never failed, and you won't start now. approached confession each week in Lent in such a way that we lay bare the brokenness in order to begin the process of healing. We know we need to restore our own holy vessels while also healing the community and the world. The work of healing we will continue as we integrate all we have learned with all that we will do. For now, we acknowledge how hard it is to move from thinking to doing. Let us pray. Forgiving God, we have opened ourselves to healing, and sometimes it is easier to pray nice prayers than to do the hard work of doing something about them. Help us remember our sacred nature 
the fragility of our holy vessels, so easily shattered and yet so capable of transformation. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to believe in our ability to change and heal as you believe in us. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. In the silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my fear could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. you to return to that warm orb of light that lives deep within you once again. It may already be a glow with the excitement of the parade, the presence of Jesus leading us on. But if you are struggling or have struggled in this season of recovery to feel this warmth of assurance within you, do not despair. You are not the one who has to create the light. It just is. And it is a pilot light that never goes out. You will at some time begin to notice it return to your awareness. And know this. You are never alone in the struggle, no matter what. Love is on the journey with us. Life's parade is not passing you by. You are a part of the body of Christ, a community seeking healing for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. I invite you to imagine the warmth that surrounds you extending to those who are nearest you. Imagine it extending beyond the walls that surround you out into the neighborhood, into our wider communities, into the nation, and see it spread like the rising sun. Let it expand to all the world, and let this be our peace. Amen. Amen. If you have not already, I invite you to open your eyes. The peace of Christ is with you. And also with, and also you. with you. We know only too well that what we are doing is nothing more than a drop in the ocean. But if the drop were not there, the ocean would be missing something. 
People pay for what they do, and still more for what they have allowed themselves to become. And they pay for it very simply, by the lives they lead. Act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. What we do comes out of who we believe we are. You can't make yourself feel positive, but you can choose how to act. And if you choose right, it builds your confidence. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings.
Please won't you pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together find their way into the heart of God this morning. Amen. So this is the first time that Yumi has been back in worship with us since March of 2020. It's so good to have you back. In addition to being an exquisite singer, Yumi is one of our healthcare heroes. And last Palm Sunday, 2020, do you remember last Palm Sunday, 2020? We did the Palm Sunday car parade for our medical professionals. There were 70 cars and Doug had a donkey in the, in the front truck and we waved these palms around and we drove through the neighborhoods of our healthcare professionals and we ended up at Clinton Hospital and the nurses came out and we all wept and um, right before we went in worship, I read a letter ending with Kristen Turner's words. She said, we don't deserve you, but we need you. We don't thank you enough, but we depend on you. We don't understand your pain and suffering, but you must feel it for us. And we will do what we can to soften your path. It's a year later and Yumi is here. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you for being a model for us, for saving lives, for softening our path, for singing. We don't deserve you, but we need you. And your singing heals us as much as any medication that you administer at the hospital. So since Palm Sunday 2020, so much has changed and a lot has stayed the same. We have learned much about our neighbor's capacity for goodness and love especially in this church. And we have also learned much about our neighbor's capacity for selfishness and hate. What a year. <laughs> Too often we have focused on the latter instead of the former. Miroslav Wolf says, forgiveness flounders because I exclude the enemy from the community of humans and myself from the community of sinners. We have been so deep into the business of pointing out the splinter in the eyes of our neighbors and we have missed the logs in our own. It's never too late for grace, my friends, right? It's never too late for grace. It's never too late for a reminder that we are only human and doing the best that we can. So I wanted to share this poem by an unknown author this morning. It's called, If You Get Sick, I Love You. If you get sick, I will not tell you you should have eaten better exercised more, taken herbs, been safer. I will not try to figure out at what precise moment of your particular human carelessness you contracted the disease. I will not tell you it's your fault that you were selfish or high risk or reckless with this body of yours, vulnerable as mine and just as capable of betrayal. I will not say, well, what did you expect? It was a matter of time. You get what you deserve. You asked for it. Because if shame was medicine, we'd all be healed by now. I'll think about how viruses are proteins looking for hosts and how we are animals alive and desperate warm-blooded and whole, and how we are humans, 
exposed and terrified, making up stories of borders and boundaries, as if we live in self-contained units where nothing comes in and nothing goes out. Honey, if you get sick, when you get sick, I will love you. I will ask you what you need to feel better, and I will do my very best to get you that cup of ramen, extra blanket, HBO login, pack of spirits, grocery delivery. I will tell you that you're not alone, send you memes, and whisper your name in soft prayers and healing by the hot pink candle on my windowsill. I'll send my biggest rage and grief to the state, the stars, the forces that abandon us, that make us go to work and then pay for health care and pay to survive. And I, I will keep loving these bodies, yours and mine, that are always our own and always each other's, porous and sublime that make way for touch as they w make way for sickness. The only antidote to trauma is connection. Soon and very soon, the pandemic itself will subside. We will recover physically and mentally. We will bury our dead. We will nurse our psychological wounds and return to our lives. But some of us will still be mired in resentment and rage at our neighbors, which will keep us isolated. If shame was medicine, my friends, we would be healed by now. Physical and mental healing from this year will be the easy part. Forgiving our own and each other's humanity, that's the work of Jesus. That's the way of love. So we have two stories that we are working with today as we continue our Lenten journey of healing. One is the story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and the second is the healing of the paralytic in the Gospel of Matthew. These two scriptures allow us to look at two parades. One is a parade of desperate people carrying a person who is paralyzed on a stretcher. And one is a parade led by a humble king on the back of a donkey with only coats to ease his seat. Both parades feature a crowd of people begging Jesus to save. There are no shows of military might or impressive floats with large balloons and pop stars lip syncing. Yet the vulnerability and courage of hurting people willing to demand dignity is an impressive show of strength. For a moment in time, the crowd is shameless and not alone. The healing text we read from Matthew features a group of people carrying a paralyzed man who's lying on a bed to Jesus in a plea to heal his affliction, a parade of glorious weakness. Jesus sees their courage. He is impressed with their faith. He doesn't shame the man who is paralyzed or blame him for his illness by saying, you get what you deserve or, well, what did you expect? And yet, instead of healing the man's body right away, he tells the man that his sins are forgiven. This was not what the people in the procession were looking for at all. They wanted an embodied, obvious sign of Jesus' power, not a symbolic one like forgiveness that they couldn't see proof of. Perhaps they are frustrated that Jesus sees this man, just a, a, his, a human who is multidimensional, not just a paralyzed man, but a human who is more than just his physical affliction, but capable of sinning too. They are unimpressed and angry that Jesus seems to think he has the authority to forgive sins at all, 
Who does this guy think he is, they ask each other. This man is blaspheming. Jesus can perceive their thoughts, so he rebukes them by suggesting they have evil in their hearts. Jesus is more interested in showing them the power of God's grace than the power of God's curative magic. What's easier, he asked them, forgiving sins or telling someone to stand up and walk? What's more important, he asked them, a healing of the body or a healing of the soul? Jesus ends up healing the man's body nevertheless. He tells him to stand up, take your bed, and go home. And the man does, much to the gathered crowd's amazement. They were disheartened, so Jesus showed them that care and courage can go hand in hand. Not only can Jesus cure us from physical ailment, Jesus can heal us from sin. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, can you imagine? There's nothing we can do or say, nothing in the realm of humanity that is beyond the saving grace of love. What's easier, Jesus asks, forgiveness of sin or healing of the body? Those of us who have nursed grudges far beyond any temporary infirmities know the answer to that question. Forgiveness is not the easy way, but it is the way of Jesus. Our ability to forgive ourselves and others is the foundation that can transform infirmities and allows us to move on from the traumas of this past year. The parade of compassionate power that we celebrate today is underscored by a story of transformation, symbolizing our ability to fuel our movement of recovery. So in his entry into Jerusalem that starts the journey toward the cross, Jesus shows us how far he is willing to go to forgive. The celebration of Palm Sunday is always a little mawkish and macabre, although you did such a beautiful job of it this morning. It wasn't mawkish at all. It was stunning. Zach, you know how to lead a parade, man. Unbelievable. Not at all mawkish. (laughs) We've heard this story, though, so many times, right? We hear it every year, and we know what happens next. It's sort of like a movie where we already know the gruesome, tragic ending of, and we always cringe a little, even when we watch the happy part at the beginning, because we know that there will be pain. We also know that in the end, love will win. Amen? But in this story, Jesus, a newly popular prophet, which means truth teller, has his disciples go and steal a donkey and a colt. Yes, he has them go and steal livestock. The disciples then bring the donkey and the uh, the colt to Jesus, who rides into Jerusalem, where he is hailed as a king. And palms wave in the air in celebration, right? We wave our palms in the air and they throw them on the ground to make his path soft, and they put their coats down too. But Jesus' kingly celebration was different than others. There were no fancy saddles and horses and chariots, just a donkey with some coats laid over to ease his seat. This procession didn't look at all like a kingly procession. There were no gleaming armor or guards or weapons. It was more like a protest rally, a pride parade, a march on Washington. Jesus' entry into the city from Mount Olive was a fulfillment of the prophet Zechariah's words, Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. It was as humble an entry as it was triumphant, much like his birth in a lowly manger was. A joyous procession of a multitude of newly courageous disciples followed him. They cried out, Hosanna, which means I beg you to save. In the procession were all those in need of salvation, the religious outcasts and the inner circle, those on the margins, the lepers and the lame, the strangers, the aliens, the prostitutes, the homeless, the sick, the hypocrites, the adulterers, the drunk and the sober. 
kind of a scrappy bunch of sinners and saints just like us. Scared, sad, banged up, lonely, worried, isolated, sick, angry, divided, begging to be healed. They were disheartened, and Jesus showed them that care and courage could go hand in hand. A parade of glorious weakness. The processional was truly a great celebration, a pop-up merry band. And in hindsight, right, it just looks shameful because the same crowd will spit on Jesus, will jeer at him, will mock him, will laugh at him while he's crucified by the Roman authorities just days later, and he knows it. We are all so quick to tear down our heroes and leaders when we are afraid. And he forgives us anyway. This Palm Sunday story is significant and, only, and not only as a story about the fickleness of the crowd, but as a story about an extravagantly grace-filled God. The story of, a Palm, Sun of Palm Sunday is a reminder to us that Jesus would enter Jerusalem to preach and heal and save despite his fate. Jesus would rather climb up on a cross and die to show us how loved we are by God than to save himself. Jesus, instead of choosing self-righteousness and backing down, chose death to make this point. Jesus, instead of choosing anger and scorn at the tormentors in the crowd, said, Forgive them, Father for they know not what they do. Forgiveness is not the easy path, but it is the courageous way of Jesus. And it needs to be our way too. Barbara Brown Taylor says that salvation is not something that happens in the end of a person's life. Salvation happens every time someone uses a key to open a door he could have locked instead. This Holy Week, if we want to heal, we better get into the business of forgiving. We are all only human and we know not what we do, so forgive. Forgive others. Forgive yourselves most of all and begin again in love. Reserve your biggest rage and grief to the state, to the stars, to the forces that abandon us, that make us go to work and then pay for health care and pay to survive. Do the work of the Lord, whose steadfast love endures forever. Keep loving these bodies, yours and mine, that are always our own and always each other's. Amen. We will pray in this way this morning. Those of you who are joining us online, please won't you place your prayers in the comment section and we will pray them out loud from the pulpit. And if you've joined us here in the sanctuary, there are slips of paper in your bulletins. You may write your prayers. And as we sing, you can come forward and place them in this purple basket in the front of the sanctuary. And I will pray those out loud for us too. And now we will sing ourselves into a time of prayer. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my word is in vain. But then the Holy Spirit re 
revives my soul again. pray with me. Healer of every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust that sorrow will end, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recover from the toxicities and grief of our time. Even when we cannot seem to believe it, we know that you see beauty in our brokenness. We pray especially for those who feel there is no end to sorrow, who feel that we cannot gain traction no matter what we do or how hard we work to bring peace and justice to the world. We give thanks that when we cannot bring ourselves to the healing source of your love, there are others around us whose words and actions bring us hope once again. Help us to also learn to offer hope when we have the opportunity on this parade of compassion called life. We pray this day with Joan Tibnan, prayers for all who suffer, God in your grace and mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with John Woodsmall, prayers for Sterling Police Detective DJ Johnson, who's scheduled for bone marrow transplant from his son tomorrow. God in your grace and mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray with Joyce Mara, prayers for Jen S. M. recovering, oh, Jen Scalise Mullet, recovering from her car accident. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Caitlin Morrow, um, her best friend's husband is battling cancer for the last three years and went into cardiac arrest this morning. Please pray because he has two small children. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Cindy Pop Hager, prayers for Angela, who will have open heart surgery on Tuesday to replace two valves. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Pat Gingras, um, prayers for all the lives lost as a result of COVID. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Catherine Lewis, prayers uh, for healing for Catherine. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Carol Hoffman, prayers for her across the street neighbor, Jackie Preventure, for comfort and healing. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Shauna Hopkins, prayers for all those lives who have been irrevocably been changed by gun violence. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Uh, we pray with Joan Tibnan, um, may my hands not both need surgery, just one, God willing. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Marianne Powers, prayers for John and her dear friend, Charlie in Maine, who has just begun chemo. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Carol Hoffman um, for her friends in Boulder, Colorado. 
God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray with Betty Nelson, prayer for all of us, forgiving, forgetting, letting go, and love. Hugs to all, God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Shauna Hopkins, prayers for her dear friend Crystal, who lost her mother this week. Please hold her and her family in your thoughts. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray with Will Pelletier, um, prayer for healing for his friend Kevin, who continues to struggle with serious health issues. Help him to be more patient with a medical system that is slow and difficult to navigate. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray a prayer of thanks to God that my wife is recovering from emergency surgery. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Pray for my children, teenagers who are struggling in this post-COVID-19 learning environment. I pray for their mental health and well-being. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Thank you, Lord, for Amberly and Tiana's birthday party. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray a thank you to First Church for being here during this difficult time. This is our first time back at church, but it has been wonderful to watch online. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray, uh, oh, a prayer of thank you that I, I saw my best friend yesterday and ate cupcakes. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. especially your grace. Prayer of thank you for good jobs and health. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Please pray for Ann Mazzola's aunt, Donna, who starts treatment for colon cancer this week. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for shoppers in Boulder, Colorado, people on the street in Virginia Beach, protesters in Myanmar, sex workers in Atlanta, Palm Sunday worshipers in Indonesia, and for all those who mourn them this week. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we pray a prayer of praise and gladness that my daughter Amberly turns 10 this Tuesday. God, in your grace and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we pray all this in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said many things in this week's healing story, but let's hone in on two words. Take heart. The French word for heart, and I apologize to anybody who speaks French, is cur. Gianna, help me. Cur? She'll tell me later. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's all and good. it means both the physical organ of your heart, but also courage. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem was also a sign to people that they could take heart that they were worthy to be saved. The meaning of the cries of Hosanna. They were disheartened, and Jesus showed them that care and courage go hand in hand. As you look back on the season of healing that we've shared during Lent, what is it that you've learned? What do you want to give away to others through your words and your actions? I want you to take a moment to think on this. And when you're ready, I want you to take the piece of glass in your hand and place it against your heart, breathing deeply and inviting the Spirit to show you the next step that you need to take to heal your corner of the world, even if that's just your household or your neighborhood. Keep your eyes open this week at the right moment. I want you to give the right person, this symbol of beauty and brokenness. When you give it to them, you might say, take heart, you are not alone. This gift that you give uh, this week uh, is something that should be easy for us because we're a community that gives. We're a community that believes in the power of generosity, both in our time and our attention and our energy and our resources. I'll invite you to pull out your phone uh, during this next song. Uh, go to fcsterling.org donate, and you can either make a one-time 
or a reoccurring gift. Um, the best thing about Disney Plus is you don't have to remember to pay for it. They take it out of the, of the bank account every month, set it and forget it. We can do the same thing for church, right? It's 2021, let's get with the times. If it works for Netflix, it can work for us. So make that, that recurring gift uh, part of your monthly giving, part of your budget. Sit down um, at the table and see what you can afford to give on a monthly basis. And I hope that you will give and give generously in this time. If you would rather not give digitally, there is an offering plate towards the front of the church by the entrance. I hope that you will uh, give cash or check. And now we'll enter into this time of generosity of spirit um, during this next song.
Let us pray. Lord God, we don't deserve you, but we need you. Let us follow after the example of the crowds that softened the paths of the Savior with palm branches and garments. Let us do what we can to soften the paths of the needy. Help us not to exclude our enemy from the community of human beings and ourselves from the company of sinners. God, we know that the only antidote to trauma is connection. Use these gifts for the coming of the kingdom when love will win. Let us know the truth of our connectedness to one another and to you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, we have seen that Jesus' healing actions get a lot of attention from onlookers. This day, we have seen two different reactions from the crowd, shouts of adoration and the scoff of judgment from religious officials. Jesus usually gets one or the other, praise or accusations of heresy. But he continued his work anyway. He loved those that were deemed unlovable, he proclaimed healing in the midst of despair. He urged people to give their best, even in the worst circumstances. Following Jesus is not an easy task, but it is the way that we become whole once again by participating in the holy endeavor of bringing the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. May we follow him even into the broken places. We have asked this question each week. How can we as a church community become a health hub through our ministry and mission. And during this holy week, we will remember that death comes out of life. We will remember together in these services of worship, Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary or online at Facebook Live. Um, in our Monday, Thursday service, we will uh, have a remembrance of those who have died this year. On Good Friday at 12 p.m. Um, here in the sanctuary, we will have a funeral for Jesus. Um, please come if you uh, can get that lunch break away. We will have about um, less than an hour of worship with readings and quiet and song. Easter Sunday is this next Sunday at 6.15 a.m. We will be up on the uh, hill at Oak Hill Cemetery ready to raise the dead and raise ourselves up out of our beds and praise the Lord. So please join us at 6.15 to celebrate that death comes out of life. And then uh, Easter Sunday at 9.15 a.m., we will have our Easter egg hunt, our annual Easter egg hunt on the common. And then when we're done with our hunting, we will at 10 o'clock be um, on the steps. The worship team will be on the steps and the street will be blocked off and you can sit um, in a chair that you bring or in a chair that we have here in the street to worship um, on Easter Sunday. Please, will you pray for no rain? Yes, because if it is raining, we will be back inside and only 60 people will be allowed to come. So we're just going to pray that that doesn't happen. Um, so please join us. Please join us for all of that. Don't just go from glory to glory. Remember the death first because the, it's the death that makes the resurrection that much sweeter. Amen? Amen? Great. Let us heal ourselves in the world together with the help of love. And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Now, beloved, go with confidence that God is making us whole and holy, recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, take heart. And remember, this may be Caesar's week, but this is God's world. And may the spirit hover, move, and deliver, solve to your soul, and a spring in your step. Amen. Amen.